are many people today who claim they want to follow a man. They follow, follow, follow the God is supported because they don't want to wait upon the Lord. So let us as much as we can to try to overlook mistakes. Especially in this month of possession our possession. Yet when we remember the pain, what we go through, how you sacrifice, in this month of possessing your position, you have to pray earnestly. You have to do what you have to pray earnestly against the powers at the gate, powers at the corridor. When you are close to God, nothing will be possible to you. Sickness have no right over you. Marital problems have no right over you. But one thing you have to note is that always you must remember that someone died for you. Yeah. <laughs> amen and amen. People of God, congratulations. Congratulations. That is our message today. Standing on the word of God empowers you to possess your possession. Tell your devil, standing on the word of God empowers you to possess your possession. When you stand on the word of God, everything you need, your needs are met. Everything you want is given to you. Praise the Lord. People of God, may you be seated. May you be seated. May you be seated comfortably. May you be seated as you look on your neighbor. On your left, your neighbor at your right and say, my case is settled. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, my case is settled. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, my case is settled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, my past is over. My past is over. People of God, you know, when we pray, when the praises go up, his glory come down. I want us to just look at the Bible. In the book of Psalm 112, 112, remember your name is blessed. Your name is blessed. Your name is what? Blessed. You can only bless after you have possessed the gates. Praise the Lord. Because enemies at the gate are the worst enemy. Amen. So if you look at the book of Psalm 112. We began from verse number one. It said, Can we open it? The book of Psalm, chapter number 112. We commence from verse number one. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty. On earth, the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. May the Lord bless his holy word. He said, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Hallelujah. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what empowers you to possess what God has in stock for you. When you have the fear of God in you, you cannot harm your brother. You cannot harm your sister. You cannot harm yourself. You cannot destroy yourself. The fear of God. That's why the Bible said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In Psalm 27. The Lord is the light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Oh, whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the enemies, even my fears come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. Which means for your enemy to fall, the fear of God has to be there. You have to praise him. David said, five times I praise God. Hallelujah. How many times I pray? Five times I pray. And how many times I praise him? Seven times. Seven times. Means 24 hours, David is busy doing something with God. David was never alone. That is why when the enemy tried to finish David, I'm talking about the, the case of Anselm. He went and stood at the gate. When people come, he embraced them. He said, the king is not there, but the king said, I should bless you. You should go. I love you. Enemies at the gate. They pretend to love you, but they don't love you. 
unfriendly friends. That is why for enemy to feed you in a dream, for a mermaid, for a spiritual husband to meet you or a spiritual wife to come to you, you have to use the face of anyone you know. You have to use the face, either the face of your girlfriend or the face of a woman you are looking at or the face of a girl you are lost in for. He used that face to come to you. And that's why you have to be wise. You have to be very strong. You have to be very prayerful. This is our amount of possessing our possession. The first place to possess is to possess the gate. Because if you don't possess the gate, when enemies succeed in possessing your gate, your life is in trouble. Your life is in trouble. So we have to be very prayerful. So what I'm trying to say is that when you look at it, it said, Praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his word commandment. He said, and thou shalt obey the Lord thy God. You should obey his commandment. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. People of God, I want us to look at it. Second Chronicle chapter number seven. Go to Second Chronicle quickly, quickly, quickly. Are you there? Second Chronicle, chapter number seven, verse 14. Are you there? Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now Thank you. He said, I will, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil, turn from their wickedness, then I will hear. Hallelujah. Then I will do what? I will hear. He said, are we here? I'm not just only here. Hallelujah. I will forgive their sins. When they turn away from their wicked way, I will forgive them and I will heal their land. I will save them from every infirmity. Praise the Lord. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. Number one thing, forgive their sins. You have to turn away from wickedness. Then the Lord will hear you. You have to forgive. People of God, people of God, tell their neighbor, forgive, please, forgive. Yes, we forgive, but it's too painful. It's hurting. Even our father, when the people turn against Moses, he said, Moses, run down home because the people have turned against you. These people are wicked. They have turned against you. The father was very upset because they have moved from worshiping him to turning to another God. Now look at it. He said, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. So there's a problem in the land. Hallelujah. Land is very dangerous. Land. I will heal their land. So when the land is healed, everyone is healed. Tell your neighbor, when the land is delivered, you are delivered. Praise the Lord. Remember, the Bible makes me to understand that when Moses was leading the children, he said the land was barren. The land was not favorable to them. They have to pray and Moses had to take salt. He said, he called it Mara. And the Moses have to take salt and minister on the ground. And heal the land. And the land become fertile. The bitterness ceases, And we heal their land. Praise the Lord. The same thing applied that when the children of Israel had challenges. The land was barren. The water was bitter. The fish were beautiful. There are fish. There are everything. But the water is what? Bitter. No one could drink it. Mara, 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 Mara. 
So prayer was met. They called a prophet. A prophet again takes salt. Just as Moses took salt and placed the lamb, and the lamb become fatter. The prophet took the salt and ministered in the water. And immediately, what happened? The water becomes sweet. The life of the people becomes sweet. The lamb becomes fertile. The fishes in the water become sweet. Praise the Lord. So let us as much as we can to try to overlook mistakes. Especially in this month of possessing our possession. Yet when we remember the pain, what we go through, how you sacrifice. Although I read in the scripture that David said, it is the one that have a sweet counsel with me in the house of the Lord. So if it's another person, I would have fly away. But it's you who had a sweet counsel with me. So in this time of possess, in this month of possessing your position, you have to pray earnestly. You have to do what? You have to pray earnestly against the powers at the gate. Powers at the corridor. You have to pray because what the enemy wants to do is to dispossess your finances, your health, and then you begin to complain. Look at the testimony of the young man. He was so discouraged that he wanted to harm himself. But the God of mercy remembered him. May the God of mercy remember you today in the name of Jesus Christ. May he remember you and forgive you. People of God, many have left the kingdom of God. But we have to pray that God should return them back to the kingdom. That's why the Bible, Jesus Christ did not come to prophesy to you. He came to tell you about the kingdom. That's why he says, seek ye the, seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. He's not going to get a theology from the Bible school. He's not going to wash your eyes to see. No, he's seeking the kingdom. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What is the profit? What is the profit? I remember Prophet T.B. Joshua when he was about to go. He called me. He said, Prophet Isaac, what do you think about this situation? I said, Daddy, listen to me. I know you are going. Don't worry. They will remember you. 2,000 years to come, they will talk about you. He said, do you think they will remember? I said, they will remember. He said, but where do we go? I said, they will remember, Daddy, don't worry. Just prepare your heart and leave. It is the will of the Father for you to go. <laughs> it is the will of the Father for you to go. Don't worry, prepare yourself. One day when I was discussing that issue of him going, he was telling me so many things, this one, this one, this one. I said, don't worry, don't worry, please calm down. Allow the Father who has already prepared the place for you. He said, eh? Lungi had me one day. I was on the line with him. She called me on another line. Then unfortunately, the food, I mean, the line was open. She had me. She had me talking to him. When we are discussing this, she asked me a question. This thing you people are discussing, is David Joshua going to die? Why are you people talking about him going, him going? I said, this is not your business. This is about the kingdom. We are here for business. Then I immediately I switched off the phone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I switched off the phone. Because we deliberate about it. Remember when Elijah was about to go? Elijah was there. They mocked him. I was saying it this morning. He went to Gig, he went to Gigel. He went to Jericho. The prophets in Jericho mocked him. He went to Gigel. They mocked him. He went to Bethel, a place of prayer. Gigel is a place of sacrifice. Jericho is to break the wall, to cross the gate. Jericho is a dangerous place. The gate of Jericho, that was when the, the father said, go and run it seven times. Then you blow the trumpet. <laughs> and the wall will come down. Jericho is a dangerous place. <laughs> Many people are in Jericho today. You are talking about Egypt. What about Jericho? For you to possess your possession, the gate of Jericho must come down. Hallelujah. So from when the prophet began to move with her, Prophet Elijah and Elisha began to move. The first place he went to is Jericho to break the wall. Hallelujah. To break the barrier. May every wall of Jericho in your life be broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. So that you may possess your possession. 
People of God, I'm talking about possessing your possession. That my message, possessing your possession. For you to possess your possession, you have to possess your gate of the enemy. And you have to open your heart. Because our heart is a contact point. What the enemy tries to do is to aggravate you, to make you angry. And when you're angry, the Satan enter. That is why the Bible says, be angry but sin not. I have a friend of mine, of the blessed memory. His name is James, brother James. He passed on some years back. Whenever I tell him, hey, James, I'm angry with you. He said, hey, man of God. He's a very, very gentleman. I said, British man, I'm angry with you. He said, man of God, be angry, but sin not. <laughs> he said, the Bible said, be angry, but sin not. I will never forget that boy. Be angry, but do what? Sin not. So it doesn't mean that you cannot get angry. But the moment you get angry, do not allow it overnight. You go on your knees and begin to plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Because when you get angry, Satan enter. Hallelujah. Satan enter. It's very dangerous. So, people of God, they went to Jericho first, and the wall of Jericho was broken. That was the first barrier. They went to Gigel. Gigel is a place of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Gigel is a place of sacrifice. I don't have time to explain this, but I will make time. The Father will give me the grace to explain all this to you. They went to a place of sacrifice. They sacrificed to the Father. When they come to, to, to Jericho, the prophet mocked Elisha. The sons of prophet there, they mocked Elisha. They said, don't you have, I don't you know your master is going. Why are you following the dead man? He said, it's not your business. Let me follow him. I'm seeking for salvation, not for wealth. You people, you claim to be prophet, but you cannot see the word I'm saying. Then Elijah went. They went to, the Jericho come down. They went to Gilgal. They sacrificed. After the sacrifice, it's a place of shedding blood. They shed the blood. After shedding the blood, they killed the sacrifice. Then what happened? The prophet there, the sons of prophet, they also tell Elijah, don't you have, I don't you know your, know your master is going. He said, I know, hold your peace. <laughs> he said, I'm following this man. I see something in him. There are many people today who claim they want to follow a man. They follow, follow, follow. They got disappointed because they don't want to wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Tell your neighbor, Chan Yen Yen. Tell yourself, Chan Yen Yen. Take it easy. Go slowly. Slowly, slowly. Pamuno, pamuno. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> don't let me to speak languages here. Eh? Because you're going to be surprised. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, they mocked him. He said, no, I know where I'm going. Eventually, they left Gigel. They went to Bethel. Bethel is a place of prayer. A place of prayer. Remember, the first Bethel that was built was built by Jacob. When he wrestled with God and wrestled with men, and his name changed. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis, and he put a stone. He saw the angels going up and going down. He said, surely this is the place of God. The God is here and he called it better. He put a stone and do the first sacrifice. Praise the Lord. So this is what I wanted to get. Following God is not an easy task. Anything close to God attracts attack. Condemnation, name calling. But if you can hold your peace, you possess your possession in the name of Jesus Christ. So what happened then? The fear of God. They left better. They went to Jordan. <laughs> they went to where? They went to Jordan. The very moment they got to Jordan, the sons of prophet in, in Bethel, they tell him, don't you know their master is going? Why are you following him? He said, hold your peace. I know. They come to Jordan. The sons of prophet in Jordan. Jordan is another place of possessing. It's a place of ascension. Tell your neighbor, Jordan is a place of ascension. After the moment you cross Jordan, everything that belongs to him must get it. So, but for you to get to Jordan, you have to be, you have to be patient. Hallelujah. You have to be patient. It's not easy to get to, to Jordan. Tell your neighbor, it's not an easy trip to get to Jordan. For you to get to Jordan, you have to pay the price. Elijah paid the price, but today nobody wants to pay the price. 
You see that you run to this place. You run to this. What are you looking for? Look at your neighbor. Say, God is here. Tell your other neighbor, you are in the presence of God. Tell yourself, God is watching me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then tell you all the world, say, I see God in you. <laughs> I see God in you. Because if God, if I see God in you, there's no one that can see evil in you. Because everything he created is good. Hallelujah. Everything he created is good. So right there in Jordan, the sons of prophets come again. So whenever you are about to have a breakthrough, there must be resistance. There must be what? Resistance. But those resistance, when they come, you have to be very consistent. It's the consistency, which is the continuity that gives you victory over the enemies. Tell your neighbor, it's consistency, which is continuity that gives you victory over the enemies. Hallelujah. So, and that was what happened. After that, immediately they come to Jordan. They mocked him. He said, no, hold your peace. Then he got to Jordan. His boss looked at him and said, what do you want? He said, I want double of what you carry. Can you see? They went to four places. If you are the one, you get frustrated, you go away. He said, no, I prayed and prayed. I didn't get anything. Let me leave this church. Let me try another place. Let me. The day the angels will, maybe that day is the day you receive your blessing. And they will discourage you. Tell your neighbor, don't get discouraged. Praise the Lord. So from that very moment, he turned to him. What do you want? He said, I want double of what you carry. I want double. He said, you want double of what I carry? Hey, you have asked too much. It's like the young man, the woman that brought the two sons to our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I want one to be on your left and one on your, on your right. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the Father. He's the Holy Spirit. He's God himself. You know what he said to the woman? He said, well, this is a high thing for me. I cannot make the decision. He belongs to the Father. He's only the Father who decides who is on the right and who is on the left, not me. <laughs> and that's why I always sing the song. It is only the Father. Who knows the secret of his kingdom? It is only the king who knows the secret of his kingdom. So what am I trying to say? Our Lord Jesus Christ even said, no, this thing you ask is not for me to give you. Which means Elijah the prophet who sees everything, whom God directed, the father directed Elijah to go, Elisha to go and pick, Elijah to go and pick Elisha. And he went and picked him and said, follow me. He began to follow him. To follow a man of God, you need patience. To follow a true prophet, you need patience. If you are not patient, you follow the way. Praise the Lord. And that was exactly what happened. He said, what you ask me is too heavy. But however, when you see me no more, you will have it. The same thing applies to the Lord Jesus Christ. He took them to the mountain and said, when I depart, that is when the Father will send you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter who will be with you even to the close of edge. So when they took the mantle and they took the turban and hit on the water and Jordan give way, hallelujah, I decree, no power can stop you from this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and receive it. Say, I receive it. Say, I receive it. So I receive it. The right hand of God is power. Say, I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, when you see me no more, you will have it. Means it's not his will to give you. It is the will of the Father. Then when they got to the place he ascended, the turban fell on him. The mantle fell on him. Turban is the mantle. When he fell on him, he picked it. He put it on the shoulder. And that is all. Giant appear. Hallelujah. When he came to Jordan, Jordan could not stop him anymore. <laughs> Those who mock him begin to celebrate him. Those who mock you, they're going to celebrate you in the name of Jesus Christ. From this day, those who have mocked you, they're going to celebrate you. But you have to be very careful and very sensitive to make sure you possess your, your possession. You possess their own gate and the gate of your enemies. Amen. So when he came back, the story changed. 
He hit the Jordan with the turban, with the mantle, and the Jordan give way. Everything created shall give way to you. They shall submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, and what happened after that? Another mockery people come again. Hey, look at this man. The head is like the head of Issachar. No hair. What is happening? They begin to mock him. They begin to mock him. They begin to. He look at it. He said. He look at them. He said, "You, you are mocking at me." The white bees, bees come from every, everywhere and devour the children. Devour all of them that mocked him. Those who mock you, they will be devoured in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why I tell you to possess your position is not easy. I recall when Prophet T.B. Joshua was living. That night, that evening on Saturday, I speak to that man, that servant of the Most High God, of the Blessed Memory. To the day he was living, that day Saturday, I said, I will not speak to you because I know you are going. I will not speak again. And he said, why can't you come and see me? I said, I'm not coming. I don't want to see you. He said, why don't you come to church? I want to see you come. I said, no, I'm not coming. The father did not allow me to go. We can talk over the phone. We talk every day, every day, every day. On Friday, we talk. On Friday, we went to the mountain. I mean, that Saturday, we went to the mountain and cry and cry and cry with the freezing, freezing condition. We come back. We cry in the evening when it was about to depart. The choir was singing. I believe the choir idea. Some of them in the choir today, they are still witness there. The choir was singing. I had the angels. I said to them, I said, I saw our Lord Jesus Christ come down. He has come to take his own. I said, all of you will be sad today. Many of you will be very sad. Your faith in God will be touched. Look at Christ. He has come to take his own. That very evening, immediately they will say, no. Oh, but in Mike, I still remember Michael Kareke and Sango, and even the Mike that is there now. All of them say, no, if you say, Lord Jesus Christ, which means good thing is happening. I said, this, this is very good thing. For me, it's a good thing for him to go. He knows he's going. But then, you people, your faith will change. Why did God take him? <laughs> what did this thing happen? I said, but don't worry. We're going to see what will happen. Eventually, that evening, after some hour, I call his elder brother. Bless him. I said, do you know that daddy is going? He said, going where? I said, he's living today. He said, living where? I said, he's going to, be, he's going to heaven. He's going back to heaven. He said, what? I said, run to the church so that you may meet him. <laughs> By the time he got to the church, he has left. His elder brother, the same mother, the same father, bless him. I called him. I say, run to the church, run to the mountain. Daddy is going now. Run there, run immediately, start running. By the time he got there, it was too late. He has left. He has left. Praise the Lord. So what am I trying to tell you people? Be courageous, stand firm. This God never disappoint. Many people want to go away today from the church. They talk this, seek God first. God has already opened your way. Maybe you go to embassy, they didn't give you a visa. You come and get worried. Why do you get worried about me? visa? What is visa? Why you already have the visa in your pocket? Maybe you went to job, they refused to give you a job. You get worried. You say, God have disappointed me. Maybe you want for promotion. You went for interview. They did not give you the promotion. You come and, why do you do that? People of God, when it is not your time, it's not yours. Tell your neighbor. When it is not your time, it's not yours. <laughs> it's not yours. Allow your time to come. Allow your time. And that's why my song come. There is time for everyone. My time has come. There is time for everything. My time has come. There is time for everyone. My time has come. People of God, I want to also to tell you this. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he said there are a time and season for everything on earth. There is a time God has positioned for you. But you have to be patient. Otherwise, if you get it before the time, you'll be disgraced. So allow God to perfect what he has begun in your life. We talk about possessing your position. This, this month, people were saying, no, hey, this time we are going to progress. Since the beginning of this month, even before this month, I was holding the word. 
I was speaking about the word. I was speaking about you. I was speaking about the gate. I said, and God looked from heaven and see the word is very wicked. This word is very weak. It is full of evil continually. But God brought us here for a reason. The Father brought us here for a reason. To represent him and to return the, his people to the kingdom. Say, Father, grant me the grace. I want everyone to say, oh Lord, grant me the grace. Grant me the grace, Father. Bend your head and pray that prayer for the grace to possess. Grace to be what the Father has brought you to be. Go ahead and bow down your head and ask for the grace. Ask for the grace. Ask him to deliver you from every walk of darkness. Every power that will make me not to be with you, Father. Deliver me from them all. Grant me the grace to overcome them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Remember, in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 2, in verse number 15, it said, And uh, deliver them through the fear of death, where all their lives are subjected to bondage. Death is a bondage. Death is a bondage. Poverty is a bondage. Sickness is a bondage. But the, because of the price our Lord Jesus Christ paid at the cross of Calvary, we are all delivered from them all in the name of Jesus Christ. You are delivered. That's why he said, if you have, you, if you have grudges against somebody, you are caging yourself. It's not that you don't get angry. Get angry by saying not. Get angry and let go so that your life go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I get amen to that? You know why? Because Galatians chapter 3 verse 15, verse 14, verse 13 down to 14 say, For Christ has redeemed us from every curse. Be made a curse. Means Christ paid a price for you. A price you and I are supposed to pay, Christ paid it for you and I. Be made a curse. Can you read it for us? The book of Galatians chapter 3. Christ. From verse 13. Galatians chapter 3, 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. No, 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 it's fine. That we might... Receive what? The promises of the Spirit. It's not the promises of any other thing. The promises of the Father. Because we are the descendants of Abraham. We might receive the promises. So for you to receive the promises, you have to act faith. You have to return back to the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So everything the enemy have disposed from you, today I've returned them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, begin to appreciate him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Say, Father, I thank you for today. You have given me the grace to possess my possession. You have given me the grace. Thank you for the grace. Thank you, O Lord, for the grace. Thank you, Holy Father, for the grace. Go ahead, appreciate him. Go ahead, appreciate him. Appreciate him. Go ahead, appreciate him. Go ahead, appreciate him. Appreciate him in the name and blood of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. A heart that appreciates God is a, is a clean heart. That's why the Bible said, in Psalm 91, it said, Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew thy spirit within me. Go ahead and ask the Father to create you a clean heart. A clean heart is a heart that knows God. It's a heart that meets God. Go ahead and ask him to create in me a clean heart. Ask for a clean heart. The heart of praise. The heart of thanksgiving. The heart of appreciation. The heart of promises. The heart of looking unto the Father. The heart of waiting upon the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus Christ, mighty name, we pray. Say, oh Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Ask him to renew a right spirit within you. Spirit of the Father, spirit of the Son. Let him release it upon you. Let him release it upon you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Spirit of the Father, spirit of the Son. Let the Holy Spirit be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Say, oh Lord, teach me to die to self. Teach me to die to self. People of God, before you pray this prayer, remember the prayer I'm praying for you. Means if somebody is sick and you pray for that person to be healed, means you are dying in place of his sickness. You are taking the sickness and you are sacrificing yourself. You become a sacrificial lamb. Say, Father, teach me to die for self. Ask him to teach you to die for self. When you die for self, you die for God. Everything that is dead in your life come alive. Ask him to teach you to die for self. Oh Lord, teach me to die for self. Holy Father, teach me to die for self. Abba, teach me to die for self. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray, 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 pray. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Say, Father, right here, right now, empower me to pray without ceasing. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Oh Lord, empower me to pray without ceasing. To pray all the days of my life and to praise you. Empower me, oh Lord. Empower me, oh Lord. Empower me to pray in season and out of season. Empower me to be a prayerful brother. Empower me to be a prayerful sister. Empower me to be a prayerful family. A family that know you. A family that connect from you. A family that connect to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, wherever I've been disconnected, reconnect me to you. Reconnect me to you. Reconnect me. Reconnect me. Reconnect me, Holy Father. Reconnect me. I need to be reconnected to you. Wherever they have disconnected me, I reconnect myself right here, right now. I reconnect my finances to you. I reconnect my children to you. I reconnect my health to you. I reconnect my business to you. I reconnect my job to you. I reconnect my ministry to you. I reconnect my marriage to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, begin to reconnect, begin to reconnect, begin to reconnect. You pray in season and all of season. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Finally, say, oh, Holy Father, establish me. Establish me a person of yours. Establish me in every area. Establish me. Establish the work of my hands. Establish the work of my hands, O oh Lord. Establish the work of my hands. He said, the blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. The blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Holy Father, establish the work of my hands. For your words say, when I give unto a prophet, I will prosper. By that giving to prophet, you establish the work of my hands. Oh Lord, this day, this day as I'm going to prepare my prophetic seed, establish the work of my hands. Establish the work of my hands. Establish the work of my hands. Establish me a holy person. Establish me a holy person. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. And finally, finally say, oh Lord, restore my spiritual eyes. Restore my spiritual ears. Restore my spiritual eyes to see you, to see the truth, to see you at all times. When I'm asleep and when I'm awake, restore my eyes, restore my eyes, restore my eyes, restore my eyes. Holy Father, restore my ear to hear your word. Restore my ear to hear your word. Because what I hear can take, what you hear can take you up and what you hear can bring you down. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Father, thank you for restoring my ears. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we pray. Say, Father, restore my mouth to speak your word. Restore my mouth to speak your word. Let negative things not come out from my word. Let the word that proceed out of my word be a word that pleases me, pleases you. For it is not what goes in man, destroy man, but what comes out of man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, go ahead. Ask him to guard your lead with all diligence. For out of his issue of life proceed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let him guide your heart. Let him guide your mouth. Let him guide your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Can I hear you say amen and amen? Now cover yourself with the blood of Jesus Christ for it is done. Cover yourself. May the Lord bless his holy word. Cover yourself with the blood. Cover yourself with the blood. Cover yourself with the blood. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. I believe you have been blessed by this teaching series by Prophet Isaka. For more information, call us on plus two seven eight eight four nine nine.
1-800-789-397, Plow 278-44-47002, 0114930531. God bless you.